Have you ever been in one of those relationships where you're not actually together, but you are, if you know what I mean? Like, you're not official, but you're together in every other aspect of a relationship. This is a story about a time that I was in one of those relationships, and another reason why I, I'm glad that I found Abby, because she's the only sane woman that I've ever had in my life, apart from my mother and my pug. I always manage to get myself in really messed up situations in my life, like, I end up dating somebody that's actually a psychopath and lied about having cancer for over a year while she was also having sex with her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Fun times, remember that? Yeah, same. I was in another relationship where I got cheated on. I was in many relationships where it was just bad. It was like violent, not on my half. Like I wasn't hitting them, they were hitting me. But this is a story of a time that I was in a relationship and I generally thought I was gonna have children. Fun times. I never know where to start with stories like this, but I guess I can start off at the beginning because that normally makes the most sense, I guess. So about two and a half years ago, I met this girl at a park in Cambridge. Like people at my age, for some reason, used to organize a time where they would invite loads of their friends around into a park and just get drunk. And some people would do drugs. And it was just, it was just weird. Like not a house party, but it was like a house party with speakers and everything in the middle of a park in Cambridge. It happened all the time. It was really fucking strange. If you guys are from around Cambridge and you've seen these things, you'll know what I'm going on about. So anyway, I met this girl at this park party. There you go, that's what, a park party. I hadn't been single for that long at this point. I'd just broken up with my last proper ex before Abby. I'm not saying that Abby's my ex. Not again. And I was sad. I wanted to find another girl that would make me happy. And for some reason, I thought a park party would be a good place to do this. So 90% of the girls that turn up to these things wear really revealing stuff and like put out. You know, they end up sucking dick behind a tree. This girl didn't. <laughs> so she seemed all right. Like she wasn't, she didn't come across needy. She didn't come across, you know, psych psychopathic. She came across quite fucking nice, actually. Like, we really got along. We were chatting all night until the police came and kicked us out of the park. <laughs> Fun. And, you know, we, like, exchanged numbers and everything, and we organised to meet up, like, that weekend, like, the following weekend. And, you know, I thought, shit, I've found another girl that I can actually be with. Like, I'd just broken up with my ex, and obviously it was definitely a rebound for me, but... You know, I, I thought that we were compatible after this one night out at a park, drinking alcohol, not thinking that that changed anything. So anyway, we kind of like meet up the following weekend and like we're chatting and everything and like one thing leads to another and we, we have sex. Ha. <laughs> Fun times. Go Mike. Woo. So over like the next month or so, I slowly started not liking this girl. Like... There was something off. Like, if you guys have been in a relationship and, like, you know what I mean? Like, we weren't actually together, but we weren't not, not together. We were kind of linking. We were linking, yeah. But there was something kind of off about this girl, and I didn't want to hurt her by leaving, even though we weren't actually together. I didn't want to kind of, like, break her heart, because I know she actually really liked me. But there was something missing for me. Like, I just didn't feel like it was the right person for me. And if you guys have been in a relationship that doesn't work, you would know what I mean. And she goes to this house party with her friends and she kisses another guy and I was like, yes, thank fuck, it's an excuse to leave. It's an excuse to leave. And I was so gassed. I was so happy. It was, a, it was finally an excuse to leave her. So I acted really, really upset and I was like, what, what you've done, it's, it's really, it's really hurt me. I'm not sure if I can carry on doing this. Like, I really liked you. You threw that all away. It's something like that, and basically, I got out of the relationship, and I was so happy with myself because, like, I didn't look like the bad guy. <laughs> and I know it's probably, I know it's probably a bit of a dick move, but I didn't want to be with her, and I didn't want to break her heart. And then she made a mistake, and I, I used it to to leave. I know it's, it's a dick move, but I was so happy. I used to be a bit of a dick, I, I guess. And life kind of went on. For the next couple of months, life life went on. And maybe two, two and a half months later, I was around my best mate Ellis's house and I received a text message. When I read the message, it wasn't from a number that I had saved, so I was a bit like, okay, what's going on here? This is around the sort of time that I started getting a little bit popular on Facebook. Like, 
before I was a YouTuber, I made Facebook videos. So it was around the time that I started getting popular on there and I thought, oh, fuck, my, my number's being leaked. But then the text kind of said, on the lines of, I know stuff didn't work out between us, blah, 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 blah. We need to meet up soon, I've got some news. So I was like, shit, is, is this, let's just call her Steven for the purposes of this video. So I was like, shit, is, is this Steven? So I messaged back, obviously saying, who is this, like any sane person would. And they replied back, yeah, it's Steven. So I was like, shit, like, what's happened? Fuck. I started like panicking, <laughs> right, because me being 18 years old and not thinking about my life, I didn't use a condom. So if you guys take anything from this video, if you have sex, use a condom, because I've made many mistakes not using condoms, so, so do it. It's a very good tip. Believe it. So I organised to meet her that night and I got on my little 125cc motorbike and I drove up to where I organised to meet her. The first thing I noticed when I saw her was that she did actually look a bit bigger. Like she did look bigger. Not fat, but like bigger. So I kind of like get off my motorbike, I go up to her and she's like crying and stuff. And like, I'm not a bad person. So she starts crying and obviously I'm going to comfort her, regardless of our situation previously or anything. So I kind of gave her a hug, I'm like, are you alright? And when I mean she was crying, like it's not like, it didn't look like fake tears. Like you know when you see some people cry and you can tell it's fake or it's put on or it's over exaggerated, like she generally looked devastated. So it made me worry a little bit about what, what she brought me here to, to see, like I thought maybe like her dad or mum had died or something and I, I was like, I don't know. It was, I just felt really bad for her. And then she tells me that she's pregnant. What do you do at 18 years old when you hear that news from a fling? Not even an ex-girlfriend, like a fling. I was 18. Like, what, what do you do with that news? Like seriously. I'll tell you what I did with that news. I said, is it mine? <laughs> Go Mike. Best, best thing that you can reply back, isn't it? And she's like, yeah, you're the only person I've slept with. Ever. As in, she was a virgin and she hasn't slept with anyone else, is what she told me. And I'm like, how, how would you know that you're pregnant? And she said that she went to the doctors uh, because she'd missed her periods for two months and, and got a, a scan and showed me these scan pictures. At about two and a half months, which is around ten weeks, there is actually kind of a baby there. The pictures showed a face, hands, legs, arms. It showed me a baby, and I just broke down. I, I broke down completely fucking crying. I didn't know what to do, like, I was looking at a picture of my kid, my my baby. I, I don't know how to say this without looking like a pussy, but it is a surreal moment in your life when you're confronted with the news that you're gonna be a father and shown a picture of your unborn, <laughs> and showed a picture of your unborn child without even like thinking that there was one there five hours before. So I properly broke down, I was proper crying and I decided to take her back, but not like take her back because we we're never together, but I mean like try again, link again, you know, not be official but try and make stuff work for the, for the good of our son or daughter, obviously I don't know what it was. <laughs> And I, I was really excited about this, but I was too young to tell my parents. I was too young to tell anyone really. So I had to keep it all a secret from my family because I didn't want people to be disappointed in me for getting somebody pregnant that I wasn't even with. So, so we go through this like extra couple of months of being back together, but not being together. Like, like I said at the beginning, like linking. And I stay around her house one night. You know, she seems to still have the same amount of belly swelling as she did when I first met her, which I thought was strange, but I didn't really think anything of it. Like, I'd already been lied to about having cancer at this point, and I was like, what are my odds of somebody lying about fucking being pregnant as well? I just didn't think someone would do that again to me. I thought this person was better than that, even though I didn't want to be with them. So I'm staying around her house, and I go to the toilet, and there's blood in the, in the toilet bowl. So the first thing I think is, ah, oh, she, she, she must be on her period. And then I clocked, I was like, she's pregnant. She can't be on her period. And th this is like an ensuite to her room. She had quite a nice house. 
it was just her and her two parents. Both of the rooms had en suites and there's a toilet downstairs. Like, this is a room that only she would use, or me, if I'm staying there. So I kind of clocked, like, shit, can you bleed during a pregnancy? Like, so I googled it and, yeah, apparently you can bleed a little bit. So, you know, I didn't really think anything of it. So I leave the toilet, go back to bed, and she's laying there. And she's, she's, she's fine. But she was, like, too fine to have just bled when she was pregnant. Like, I don't know about you guys, but if I was a girl and I was, at this point, about four months pregnant and some blood came out of my vagina. I mean, I'll, I'll start panicking. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'll start panicking. I'll tell somebody, I'll go to the hospital, I'll get everything checked, I would want to make sure my baby's okay. But she was too okay with being bloody. And I it, something just didn't sit right with me that night. Like, I, I went to sleep with her, and, and something just didn't sit right with me. Like, the fact that she was too okay about that bleeding. And then I started getting all the paranoia of, you know, how I felt when my when I found out my ex lied about having cancer, when people were cheating on me, I started getting that weird gut feeling that something was going on that you get. It must have been about six o'clock in the morning before she woke up. I woke up and like, I'd had a bad dream about everything. And I go, let me check the sanitary bin. All girls have a fucking sanitary bin. Let me check it. If there's a tampon in there, if there's a, anything in there, I'm leaving. Like, I, th if there's a tampon in there that's fresh, Something's going on. Something's definitely going on. I know this sounds really, really fucking weird, but I go back to the toilet, pretend that I'm going for a wee, I like, turn on the tap, open the sanitary bin, and there is a fresh looking period pad. I mean, this girl shouldn't have had a period for four months at this point. She apparently went to the hospital after two months of not having a period. So that's two months where she didn't have one, plus the extra two that she had, she wouldn't have had one. So that's four months where there shouldn't be any tampon related shit in that bin after four months and if there is that's vile and if there's a five month old tampon that's grim but i opened it up and there was a couple in like there was all the papers and shit and i was like it, it, it didn't sit right like she's on her period is what i thought and she'd been like off with me for a couple of days about doing stuff in the bedroom what have you so i just thought you know she's just, she's just being a mum there's hormones imbalance but obviously i clock that she's on her period. I broke down again. I sat in the fucking toilet, crying, getting, I was pissed off. I, oh. So it's the feeling when, you, when you've been let down by somebody. It felt like she'd lied to me about having cancer. It was, it's the same sort of pain inside you. I don't have to explain it. It's such a, it's like something's inside your belly and it's trying to eat its way out. It's the worst feeling in the world. Like, I fucking hate it. And I just left. I got my stuff and I just left the house. And she texts me when she wakes up and she goes, oh, wh where have you gone? You weren't here this morning with like a little love heart and shit. And I told her. I told her that I found the tampon and everything. And then she started lying to me about how she'd had a miscarriage and she didn't know how to tell me. And like she was on a period now and like the baby had come out and like, just all of this bullshit. Like you, you know when you can, you can sense the bullshit. And I basically just told her where to stick it. Another couple of months go by and I've not forgotten about it, but I've kind of let it go Like at this point. Like, I just couldn't be arsed with girls. Like, like everything that I'd got to that point had just been shit. I mean, I lied to about people having cancer, people cheating on me, this girl that I wasn't even with, lying about being pregnant and doing me back into being with her again. And um, I went on a night out in Cambridge and I bumped into her and she came up to me and basically apologised for everything and said that like she wasn't in the right frame of mind to be by herself and she missed me and all this bullshit so I just told her to do one and basically admitted that she'd lied about being pregnant. <laughs> Fun. I don't know what it is with me, right, and being so, so bloody attractive that girls feel like they need to lie about having cancer and lie about being pregnant just to get me back. But yeah, I kind of felt ready to tell this story because, you know, you gotta wait to feel ready to tell stuff sometimes and why not tell it to you guys? More of the story, use a condom. That's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.